Making Minecraft faster. How can you boost FPS and get the best performance possible? Well, in order to do it, really and truly, you're going to need a mod like Sodium. And Sodium specifically is the one I would recommend. It is great at boosting performance in Minecraft. Taking it from, you know, 20, 30 FPS to, in some cases, well over 100. So much so that I'd actually be curious what your starting FPS is with this video and the ending FPS. Nevertheless, I'm not going to go over specifically how to get Sodium in this video, but it is a fabric mod. Luckily, as you can see, we have guides on fabric. We have guides on sodium, both in the description down below. For you to go check out and easily get both of them installed, up and running, and these are updated to 1.20. The articles just aren't updated yet because the videos haven't come out yet at the time I'm recording this, but they will be once this video is released. Nevertheless, from there, we can go ahead and jump into the Minecraft launcher. This is actually where we're going to want to start with getting Minecraft as lag-free as possible. Now, if we go to installations, you'll notice that I do have sodium here already. Yours is probably going to be called fabric installation, but that's okay. I just kind of set up a custom one here for this video. But once you're here, hover over it and click the three dots on the right-hand side. Then click on edit. Once you've done that, you'll have this kind of panel where you can edit your installation. What we want to do is scroll down and click on more options here. Scroll down again, and at the beginning, you'll have this, XMX, 2G or XMX a number G. This is how many gigs of RAM Minecraft has. Now, in a lot of cases, two gigabytes is enough, but upping this to four gigabytes, assuming your computer has at least eight gigabytes of RAM, which most computers do these days, can be a good way to get a little more performance out of Minecraft. But if your computer does have less than eight gigs of RAM, you can go ahead and leave this at 2G. I actually leave it at 2G for this video just to show you that it is possible. If we go ahead and click save there, we can now launch up Minecraft with sodium. Again, this guide is targeted at sodium. If you don't have sodium installed, you might as well not go through this video because sodium is pretty much required in order to get the best FPS and the highest FPS out of Minecraft. So here we go, Minecraft is open, but before we get into optimizing Minecraft, let's go ahead and talk about this video sponsor, our company, Simple Game Hosting, at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown .xyz sgh. Go down there, click that link, and start your very own Minecraft server, where we have one-click installation of mod packs, easy support for plugins, adding your own mods, and an amazing help center should you have any issues. On top of all of that, we also have live chat support for any issues to make sure that no matter what, you can do what you want to with your Minecraft server. We have high-quality hardware at locations all around the world, and our goal is to make hosting Minecraft servers simple. So if you want to host a Minecraft server the simple and easy way, look no further than Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash sgh. So here we go, Minecraft is open. We can go ahead and from here, I'll navigate to options. Now, we're going to be doing most of our work in video settings, but first, it is worth noting that you don't want to have any resource packs other than fabric mods installed or on the selected side. I know there are resource packs out there that say they will boost FPS, but that's usually not the case. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and navigate to options, video settings, and this is where, as you can see, everything's different and where we can really start to get to use sodium. If you're not already, you might want to go get a starting FPS figure, by the way, just to make sure you know what it is before and after. That way you can see what the improvement is. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and turn our render distance down to about eight chunks. Now you can go lower. The lower you go, the more FPS you're going to get. But with this video, while we do want to get amazing FPS, we also want to make sure that we can actually play the game and two render distance is kind of kind of bad it's kind of just hard to play so usually six to eight is going to be best i'm gonna go with eight because i actually do have a pretty decent pc but for you six can be a kind of middle ground if all you want to do is play and you're playing on a very bad computer two is going to give you the best performance for simulation distance turn this all the way down the lower this is the better and it's it's basically just how far away terrain and entities are loaded as you can see there brightness doesn't affect performance set it to whatever you want same can be said for gui scale i would recommend not playing minecraft full screen and setting a resolution back in the launcher for it and playing at that resolution that's just because you can control it the lower your resolution the higher fps you're going to get vsync needs to be turned off and frame rate needs to be unlimited so all the way to the right. View bobbing, attack indicator, and autosave indicator all don't affect your performance. If we go into quality here, we want to make sure that graphics are set to fast. Turn clouds off, set the weather to fast, and then we want to set the leaves quality to fast as well. For particles, we want to do the minimal amount of particles. Smooth lighting, turned off. Biome blend, turned down to zero. Entity distance, turned down to 50 there. And then entity shadows, turned off. Vignette, I don't like the vignette, so I turn it off to impact on performance is pretty low. For mid-map levels, we want to go ahead and turn this all the way down to zero as well. Make sure you click apply at the bottom after you've done all that, and then you're good to go. We can then move on to the performance tab, and this is where 
Sodium makes a lot of the technical changes that can really improve performance. First is the chunk updates here. Now, if you have a good computer, I would recommend turning this up to around three or so, maybe four or five. But if you don't have a good computer, and most likely if you're looking to boost FPS, I'm gonna guess if your computer is on the lower end, turn this to zero. Always defer chunk updates can be turned on, and that's going to defer chunk update can be turned on. Now, as it says, you may notice some visual lag in game, and if that is occurrence, you're noticing some weird lag, even though your frame rates are okay, maybe turn this off. From there, we want to go ahead and make sure that block face culling, fog oc occlusion, excuse me, and entity culling, as well as anime only visible textures are all turned on. These are huge, 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 huge frame rate boosts when it comes to combining them all together. Click apply and move on to the advanced tab. The chunk memory allocator, we wanna go ahead and make sure is set to async. That's a big thing and it's gonna be a massive performance boost. Use persistent mapping, we wanna make sure is enabled. That is if you can enable it, sometimes you won't have OpenGL as it says there and that means you can't really use this. Render frame rate usage needs to be set somewhere in the middle here. Somewhere between three and five, maybe six, somewhere in that range. I usually go with three just to be on the safe side, but it really just depends on you know your hardware and what you play with with this. I would recommend setting three and going up if you need to. Allow direct memory access, wanna make sure that's enabled. Click apply if you need to, and we're gonna go ahead and go in game. This is gonna be absolutely crazy. It wouldn't surprise me if we break over 800 FPS with this, and that is with the eight render distance. So here we are, we're on a server, and we come in the ground and we hit F3 on our keyboard, we can see our FPS in the top left. Oh, it looks like we might not hit that high of FPS and we're actually gonna be only around 500, not 800. Uh, that's kind of sad. Usually though, if you walk around a little bit, let the chunks load in around you. You can actually boost your FPS even more. So that is something to keep in mind, but overall, Still very, very good. Anything over 30 FPS in Minecraft is extremely playable. I very often play with 30 FPS with really high performance intensive shaders, and it is perfectly fine. So if we ran around a second here, we're actually near some animals and stuff. There we go, the FPS starts boosting. Oh, and boom, as we're standing still, 900 FPS is achieved. By the way, your FPS is in the top left. I suppose I should have mentioned that there. It's right up here in the top left. That's how you can see that. And again, hit F3 to pull this menu up. But there you go. That is how you can increase FPS in Minecraft. In this case, boosting it to well over 800 FPS. Again, 30 FPS is playable, 25 FPS is playable, and I played on that back when I was playing on a very old Pentium laptop when I first got Minecraft. I would play with 25 FPS and just play because I wanted to play. So, there you go. We can probably boost this even higher really quick. We go into video settings, turn that chunk render distance all the way down. As you can see, you can't really see much, right? You can't see much around you, but the FPS boost does happen. Uh, not as much as you would expect in this case, but I'm guessing it's because my computer is a pretty decent computer, so you don't really have to uh, have to think about that. As we run away from some of those entities, you can see we are boosting again well over into the 900 FPS range. So there you go. Feel free to play with these settings. Feel free to increase things. Feel free to change things around as you need to. Obviously, if you wanted to boost your render distance up to like, a, you know, something crazy like 22, you can do that and see where your FPS falls. As you can see, that's dropped us to about 300, but that's still incredibly playable. You can turn on smooth lighting, different things like that to make it Minecraft look better. But overall, you now know how to optimize Minecraft in 1.20.1. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. And be sure to check out our company, Simple Game Hosting, at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown of XYZ slash SGH so your very own 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server. At Simple Game Hosting, you will get one-click installation of mod packs. You can install plugins, mods, anything else that you want. And we have amazing live chat support should you have any issues. So go check out Simple Game Hosting again at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown of XYZ slash SGH. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more incredible content, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.